Hello and welcome to the Student StarCraft AI Tournament broadcast. This is Nightcat. I'll be your host for today. We have some exciting news here. The elimination bracket has been played out. It is complete. So we can go ahead and start casting it. And uh, so that this does not drag on into, you know, eternity, uh, what we're going to do is the idea is that uh, I'll be doing the casts on Sunday and then Showbus Wagons will be taking the reins on Saturday. So you're going to be getting two casts a week, one on Saturday and one on Sunday with today being the first cast of the 2022-2023 elimination bracket part of the tournament. So what we have here is the uh, on screen is the bracket with the top 16 seeds all lined up with each other here. Today we're going to be going over the top four matches. So we're going to be looking at Crazio going up against Big Brave Z, Dragon going up against Ironbot, Stardust up against Xiao Yi, and then finally Purple Wave going against Mad Mix P. Definitely some cool uh, matchups here. I'm excited for this first one, Crazio and Big Brave Z. Uh, to, I, I love TVZ, it's a great matchup, so it'd be great to see how things shake out there. Uh, and as you can see, the winners of the top two are going to go up against each other, the winners of the bottom two that we're doing today, uh, you know, Stardust and Chuggy and Purple Wave and MXP will go up against each other. But this is a double elimination tournament, so you know the losers of these are not completely knocked out of the tournament. They will be locked knocked down into the losers bracket where they will be able to play and then the surviving AI of the losers bracket will come in to face the winner of the winners bracket to determine the ultimate winner of the tournament. With all of that said, we can go ahead and get our game one going here. It will take place on Tau Cross. We have Crazio spawning as the Purple Terran over on the left side of the map and up in the top right in the green trunks. We have Grave Z spawning as the Green Zerg. <laughs> um, also, just a to address this right off the bat, uh, I'm switching recording software, uh, recording and streaming software from Streamlabs to OBS. So if there are any audio imbalances, I apologize. I will hopefully quickly get those sorted out uh, over the first like one to two matches here. Uh, looks like Crazio is going for a proxy play. Looks like just one barracks though, um, but has cut SCV production. So this looks to be a, like an all in cheese play here. Scouts the third main, finds that it is empty, and we have McRave Z here. Let me get the production tab up so we can monitor that. It is getting a spawning pool, so it's going pool first, getting a gas. Um, I think it should be able to defend this uh, with proper control here because they should have Zerglings in time, but they're not saving their larva, which is a little bit worrying for me. So this pool is going to finish, uh, and they're not going to be able to squeeze out like the immediate larva that they're going to need. It looks like they were instead going for an expansion after that pull first. Uh, but they are going to be able to get Lings out now. They are going to lose that Overlord though, which will be a problem as that's going to supply block them. Uh, and they're going to kind of individually throw away the Lings here. Yeah, this might be a quick first game, which would be a good game for me testing the audio balance I've got going on here. The natural is going to fall. It was not canceled. Granted, that did delay the Marines from entering into the main, but uh, McRave Z continuing to send a drone out to that natural to try and rebuild it, uh, which is just getting the drone slaughtered by the Marines. And the Lings just aren't coming out enough. You know, Larva is one of the, is sometimes called like one of the extra resources that Zerg has to manage. And I think that's sort of what cost McRave Z this game here. Just did not have Larva saved up to really be able to bring out Lings and the numbers that were needed to repel this and allowed that natural to just sort of die. Got supply blocked when the Overlord was picked off at the natural as well. Uh, and then we're just kind of sending its economy off to die. And yeah, very well done. Nicely executed cheese there by Crazio. Going up 1-0 in the series. Uh, I forgot to mention too at the beginning that these are best of five. So the first AI to three wins will be the one that progresses.
second game in this series has Crazio spawning as the yellow Terran up at the top left on Circuit Breakers 1.0. We see the SCV quickly going out, so it looks like it's going to be the same strategy again, but on a four-player map this time. And we've got McRave Z spawning as the Brown Zerg up in the top right of the map, so close spawn positions, as in not cross spawn. Metal Barracks going down. We'll see if this plays out the same way or not. I have adjusted the game volume up just a little bit. I have a feeling, though, if tanks get involved, <laughs> it might be too much. Uh, but I think this level will be fine, uh, given everything. So, Overlord's being a little bit twitchy there. <laughs> the way it's, like, kind of twitching over to, the, to facing to the left. And now we've got uh, the Spawning Pool and Extractor coming down. Looks like Crazio is cross-scouting first. Gonna find an empty spawn position. We'll see. Crazio sees the Overlord. I'm not sure if it can use that to deduce that the top right is where to go, but it looks like that is where it is sending the Marines. Now that SCV is returning home, and the Overlord trying to get to the natural. Gonna get caught actually flying over the Marines instead of the safety. And McRavesy again going to get supply blocked here. Only one set of zerglings able to get out and yeah i think that's going to be the natural will it get cancelled okay so it does cancel in this case which may afford mcgrave z but instead of adjusting the plan and like throwing down like some creep colonies to maybe get a sunken or two to help defend it was just sending the zerglings or the sorry the drones to their death uh, and the Zerglings one by one to their death as well. So it looks like Crazio will take a quick and commanding 2-0 lead over McRave Z here. Uh, this one barracks rush, which it is transitioning out of. Uh, in the last game, yeah, it's got a, got a factory built and everything. So it does have a plan after this. Is going to net it another win, though. And we'll see if McRave Z can find some way to turn this around. And uh, maybe get a reverse sweep going. Game three will be taking place on La Mancha between these two. We've got McRave Z spawning as the purple Zerg up at the top right, looking to turn it around and get that reverse sweep. Grazio spawning as the red Terran down in the bottom left. Where will the proxy go this time? I'm looking for. For that proxy SCV on the mini map. Okay, looks like it's going to be down at the bottom. It's going to be on the right, on the correct side, but down at the bottom of the map here. So, not the worst case scenario for the AI here. Will McRave Z fall to the same issues as before? It looks like Crazy are checking that bottom right. I'm going to go ahead and check the top right next. Based on that uh, minimap dot movement here, we'll find and get those SCV or Marines up there quickly. Looks like McGrave Z doing the same build again. So I'm afraid this is going to end the same way here. Quickly finds where McGrave Z is. And that uh, drone is going to the natural there. And it looks like the Marines are on their way across the map already here. No sign of uh, Zergling production, no sign of Creep Colony production. Gonna knock that Overboard out. It's just gonna dance taking the shots. It falls. Oh, crazy at this time though, going to the main instead of after the, uh, the natural hatchery there. Perhaps just the uh, Marines not quite getting vision of it. Going after the drones now. Actually, this might be a quicker death than if uh, Crazio was targeting that natural. A lot of Zerglings are in the egg queue here, but yeah, there's just not going to be enough. And Crazio, I'm going to close this out. There is a drone in the natural, though. But yeah, the spawning pool falls down. Nothing in production, only 54 minerals and it looks like crazy will advance to the winner's bracket top bracket round uh two 
and McGravesy will drop down into the lower bracket, round one, where the next loss will be elimination. Nicely played by Crazio. Nice little cheese strap there being beautifully executed. And with that, we will get into our next series. Taking a quick look at the bracket here. That means Crazio will be moving on to round two of the upper bracket. McGrave Z dropping down to round one of the lower bracket. Next matchup is going to be Dragon and Ironbot here. So we have Ironbot game one. Destination spawning us the orange Terran up at the top and down at the bottom. In the red Terran, we have Dragon, a little Ted v. Ted, Terran versus Terran, Marine versus Marine action, even though the Marines are just not very much produced in Ted v. Ted, except for at the very beginning, uh, or for like specialized rushes and stuff like that. But anyway, we have ourselves Terran versus Terran here. Looks like no crazy openers. Dragon getting its barracks down just a little bit faster than Ironbot at the moment. Scout coming out for Ironbot and for Dragon as well. Scouting out about the same time. And the scouts are actually going to miss each other just based on their pathing there. But they will get to each other's bases and see that how much is up. The Dragon putting the barracks on the other side of the minerals. Dragon's going to see Ironbot's. Uh, barracks. Ironbot maybe doesn't see the barracks here, but does see the marine and will try to run away from it and keep the scout alive. Dragon going for a gasless expand here, now taking its gas now that the uh, command or yeah the command center is down. Looks like Ironbot going for a factory fast expand, uh, or maybe not. Actually, that was a red SCV that I saw drifting towards that natural. Looks like. Ironbot's going to go for one base play here. Bunker coming down for Dragon, which you pretty much need, and a Gasless Expand to deal with any early Vulture Harass. Vultures are under production. How many Vultures will Ironbot get before getting that Machine Shop? Looks like at least two. Going to go ahead and chase that initial SCB off and send that Vulture across the map. But will the bunker do enough to dissuade the vulture from running in? And it looks like it will. Trying to get some shots off there on the, uh, at least one of the marines. Trying to see if it can pick anything off. But I might think it's going to be able to. The starfire is actually on the way. And a run by there by Ironbot. Oh, gets a little bit lucky. But still gets a second uh, vulture through. Got to pick off what it can. We've got marine medic here for dragon. Which is a bit of an unorthodox uh, approach. But enough speed. Uh, vultures can take out marine medic taking a lot of damage those those marines firing just as the vulture gets into range and able to take it off out and expansion is coming down behind this looks like uh, mines was researched and we are getting wraiths but the wraiths aren't going to do too much with this marine medic composition i don't think there's also a uh, academy down well i mean there has to be for the uh, medics but Comsat stations can be deployed if needed, uh, if cloak or anything like that were to happen. Looks like Dragon's getting their own starport here. Got a little bit of harass here, but the uh, bridge is ki kind of working against Ironbot here. I like to these two AIs were uh, pretty closely seated in the tournament, so this is like about a battle of the uh, middle of the top 16 here. And it looks like we're getting a pretty good game out of it. The Marines haven't been dragged back to the back of the main there. Uh, maybe getting a little bit stuck. Looks like we have a uh, second starport coming down. So we're going to see some heavy air out of Dragon or perhaps Dropship play. Meanwhile, back home for Ironbot. Looks like we've got an uh, armory and a factory coming down. Mines are oof, laid down though, so... Ooh, that that tank did take a mine hit, but the army gets through the minefield and there really weren't any additional mines behind this Dragon taking a big risk just moving across the map without detection. There's still no commsats deployed Comsat first commsat just going down now Looks like dragon just trying to rush across the map here to play or like to, to start a contain Wraith's picking up the vulture army. There's no anti-air right now for 
Iron Bot could produce Goliath, could produce Wraith, but uh, none of the sort being produced. Also, no tanks being produced. Looks like some of the Vultures found a way around those sieged tanks. Uh, just engaging with firing shots, though, uh, I think really would be more effective if it would just get up on the tanks and lay mines and use the mines to clear tanks, which is something I don't know that I've seen AIs utilize that feature of Vulture Micro, uh, but you see that a lot in human Terran versus Terran. Vulture's running up on the t on tanks that are either sieged or not sieged if there's nothing to support them uh, and laying mines right nearby them. Some mines going down on one of the bridges here. Uh, looks like these wraiths are like guarding this particular tank for some reason. Yeah, Dragon is getting a third base down, but so is Iron Bot. At about the same time, it looks like based on the progress for action, the Dragons is a bit far further ahead. So Dragon got there, started a little bit earlier. But uh, Iron Bot with pure vultures. Okay, now we've got some Goliaths coming into the mix, but pure vultures so far being able to push this back pretty far. Actually, there's some medic for Iron Bot as well. Not sure what that medic is for. Um, I guess it could heal the SCDs. Dragon trying to push back the turrets that have been placed down. Does Iron Iron Bot does have uh, commsats, so will be able to scan if needed. And as we can see, Dragon did get cloak here. I'm just taking a quick look at the upgrades. It looks like we've got. Plus one weapons for Iron Bot, and we've got plus one weapons for Dragon as well, but we've also got some infantry upgrades. Armor being researched uh, alone for Iron Bot because of the medics, I assume. And we've got uh, actually plus two infantry weapons since Dragon is deploying like a marine medic tank sort of play here. Looks like Dragon is sort of able to get a line drawn here in the middle of the map. We have tanks with Siege now out for Iron Bot, so I'm uh, going to be able to try and draw a line itself, but Dragon just has a lot of tanks right now. The tank count for Iron Bot pretty much just got reset. Iron Bot is looking to take a fourth, though, which Dragon is not yet, but uh, Iron Bot is quickly losing the ability to defend this base, and actually there is a path that Dragon could take, but trying to take it with a tank, but getting surrounded by vultures but the vultures just not being effective in stopping the tank there over on the right and we've got the tanks here pushing on the left as well so iron bot just kind of losing its front here i think this fourth is going to be in jeopardy pretty soon and dragon now looking to take a fourth of their own vessels are out for iron bot and dragon as well which will provide some mobile, prote uh, mobile detection plus that defense matrix yeah, it looks like Ironbot being pushed across the bridge. Oh, okay, now we do have some mines going, aggressive mines being laid down, uh, but they are able to be picked off by Dragon's AI before they can activate and land on the tanks. So nicely executed there by Dragon, defending that little move. Dragon's trying to push into this right side base here, but being repelled a bit by the workers, but does get a siege to tank there now. But yeah, vault, uh, the mines there are able to clean up that tank. A little bit of damage taken, but the workers being quickly replaced here. Worker counts looking very healthy for both players right now, but Dragon is pushing into this natural across this bridge. And if Dragon can take this natural, I think it's going to be Dragon's game. But getting across this bridge, uh, no tanks on the high ground here for Ironbot. Good scan there by Dragon just to make sure... Uh, at least, at least I assume that was by Dragon. May have been by Ironbot if there was a cloaked wraith in the area. Yeah, it looks like the natural is falling now. The workers have been cleared out. Mines getting stuck on each other, which is uh, an unfortunate thing that happens a bit in AI games. Uh, when vultures are laying mines in the exact same position, which typically uh, human players are not going to be doing. So you see that a lot less in human play, but here you have the marine medic tank army uh, pushing up here. And I don't really think it was the, the, the medics kind of forming a protective wall over the, uh, the the marines here. And I don't really think it was necessarily the marine medic that has given hand the dragon the win here. I think it's just the superior tank count. Ironbot was on pure vulture for a really long time. 
and that even allowed wraiths to harass the vultures that were there. Looks like we have a bit of a traffic jam though on this ramp, but even so, like Ironbot just has income, but it's just not producing anything at the moment. I don't think this replay is broken, but units do seem to be a bit tripped up here for Dragon, and there we go, now they're getting into the main. Yeah, we can see new units uh, when they were, are able to be produced are being ordered, so. Uh, the main being cleared, it looks like Dragon is going to jump out into the lead here, going 1-0 against Ironbot. Pulling a uh, majority of the army back to go ahead and clear the other mining bases. Not sure why Ironbot stopped production altogether. I think Ironbot's not tapping up because it still has this top right base here. It is possible that something happens where, like, say, Dragon uh, crashes or something along those lines to prevent the Dragon from getting the win, but I don't think that's going to happen in this case. Dragon is a pretty robust AI. Now it's just this top right command center. Which Dragon might be struggling to get to, actually, due to the pathing on this map. But it looks like there is a Marine here that is going to find its way up there. Now the Wraiths, the Air Army, able to get there pretty easily. And a single Wraith firing on this command center. Fast SCV goes down for Ironbot. Now the tanks are making uh, over there to the right. Yeah, now this uh, command center are going to be shelled down. Good game there from Dragon, jumping out 1-0 against Ironbot, and we will get into game two of the series. Second game of the matchup here, we've got Dragon spawning as the Brown Terran up at the top left of Empire of the Sun. Down at the bottom right, in the White Terran, we have Ironbot. So we saw Dragon employing a Marine Medic tank composition up against Ironbot uh, to take that game one. And I don't think it was necessarily the composition itself, but I think it was the uh, tank count that ultimately just allowed Dragon to push and uh, take the win from Ironbot. Ironbot sticking with Vultures for really long, or Vultures only for a very long time, uh, not transitioning two tanks for quite some time and so I just did not have the tank count I think to necessarily hold against Dragon's push. Here we have uh, the scout for Dragon and the scout for Ironbot. They're gonna meet checking out this top right base. Looks like they aren't going to take the fact that they see each other and where they came from into consideration. They're just still going to check that main and then go out and I suppose it's always possible that someone is trying to trick you uh, returning a worker from somewhere to their main to hide the fact that that's your main or something else looks like Ironbot's actually going to go and do it like a reverse end scout here whereas Dragon is just going to go clockwise and find Ironbot's base sees the factory sees the the saw the worker still on gas sees the second factory coming out so knows that this is going to be another one base two factory play we have another gasless expand from Dragon, so it looks like we're going to see uh, the two builds clash against each other again, but this time there aren't those tricky bridges of the destination base, so we'll see if that plays any factor into how this turns out, if that's going to have an impact on the vultures trying to run by. Uh, this choke is pretty small for uh, 
you know, from your natural to your main. So maybe it might get a little bit more cluttered, but even despite the fact that there's no uh, bridges and this is a pretty, eh, I wouldn't necessarily call this like a wide choke from natural to the map, but it, it is wider than destination. Uh, due to the fact that destination is kind of very narrow due to those two bridges. Here we have the three vultures and they're going to go ahead and do the run by. Nice cutoff with the SCVs, actually gets two of them and then just loses a single Marine. Uh, to clean up that last vulture so nicely executed by dragon to block that run by and we're still just pure vulture production here we do have a wraith coming out for iron bot but again the marine medics they're going to be able to handle that uh looks like we went ahead and got mines which i think is a good uh one to get because you can go ahead and set up you know vision you can set up a bit of a contain although these vultures are not laying their minds it looks like they want to go in it looks like there's going to be another run by attempt here but again just two of them get outright blocked and then that third one doesn't even fire a shot on anything in the main just gets picked off by the tank there so nicely done by dragon iron you know i don't think ironbot has seen any updates in a really long time but it's like always in the elimination phase it's just that solid uh, of an AI here, but I think Dragon might have its number with the strategy that it is employing here. Marine getting picked off by a Vulture, now we have um, a tank coming up, but I don't know if Siege Mode... Yeah, Siege Mode is on the way for Iron, not quite here yet. Needs to be careful, taking shots on the tank is not what you want to do. Wandering a little bit too close there, but now it's going ahead and backing up, getting repairs from the SCVs. So we'll see if Dragon is going to be able to break out of this little contain here. There's just the one tank, though. It looks like there's no tanks in production. Yeah, th uh, there are three tanks in total out for Iron Buff, but where they are, I don't know. There's only the one here, uh, and actually it just got destroyed. There's four tanks out for Iron? Or sorry, there's, there's, that's Dragon, my bad. There was just the one tank out for Iron, and that got eliminated, and now Iron is just doing pure Vulture production, and finally we have a tank in the production queue, and I, I think that's just Ironbot's biggest issue here, is that it's, you know, just not getting a good tank count, because it's sticking with that Vulture production for so long. Now we have Dragon pushing across the map here, taking a third. Uh, looks like Ironbot is also taking a third, just slightly behind Dragon, but Dragon's army is just marching across the map here. And uh, this is not looking good for Ironbot. Ironbot's, where are the tanks? There's a Wraith harassing the main here. Actually, two Wraiths rather harassing the main. A third one coming in here. There's no commsat out for Ironbot. The academy is on the way. Woke out for Dragon's Wraiths. Dragon is aggressively moving across the map here. Looks like Iron has some good vision of bases with the mines, but... I think this is going to... Looks like Dragon's trying to get set up to do a contain. Has the cloaked rates providing some forward vision to sort of extend that range of those tanks. It only goes so far due to the uh, the turret there, though. But taking some shots on the on the uh, rates just to kind of get in there and cause some havoc. The lone tank again <laughs> goes down from Ironbot there. Another one pops out, but yeah, Ironbot's like only keeping like a couple tanks at a time here. It looks like, and now. A push making it to the natural the uh, vultures get cleaned up and just reinforcements streaming across the map here SCVs trying to run from the third I guess to the natural to maybe try to repopulate the natural but not really a good choice when there's an army sitting in that right in the choke especially when it's tanks that are just gonna decimate those workers and yeah I think dragon's gonna take a commanding 2-0 lead Ironbot's going to be looking to uh, maybe try and do like a reverse sweep here, but if it's the same builds going up against each other, I think Dragon just has Ironbot's number. And we see this usually, I think, this tournament, like the first round is usually kind of like a set of 3-0s that end up happening. Although there are, there are sometimes some close games, or some close series rather, in the first round, but...
Dragon doing a good job of keeping the Marines close to the tanks, but I think it's causing a little bit of a traffic jam at the chokes. Now the third is seen and branching off some units over to clean that up. Also took a fourth of their own. Turned out some more macro buildings. And yeah, the Empire of the Sun kind of has like sort of smallish mains, so some of some macro buildings being thrown out here just toward the middle of the map. Dragon hitting almost 200, 200 supply. Just once that macro engine is kicking in, it is just hard to stop. With this, looks like Dragon going up 2-0 in the series, and I will see you in Game 3. Reporting, 1-2-1-2, one, two, one, two. okay, good. And 3-2-1, cut. Game 3 will be taking place on Andromeda. We've got Ironbot spawning as the Purple Terran up at the top left. Looking to try and get its first win in the series here. Dragon spawning as the orange Terran down in the bottom right of the map. So we've got cross spawns again, similar to Empire of the Sun, but flipped. And Dragon is looking to close out this series with a strong 3-0 win. Andromeda is an interesting map for AIs because uh, it, it's a very interestingly laid out main where you've got like this sort of crescent shape. Uh, and up at the, if I can scroll it that way um you know you've got this mineral only that's like up on the high ground so there's not like a traditional choke into a first expansion although you know the the gas base here is meant to be that natural right with the the ramp acting as the choke between the two uh but you've got to equip your ai to be able to handle that sort of situation uh where you know because a lot of terrain analysis might think that this is a choke and then that this is the natural because that's the first base you encounter coming out of the main uh, and it also sometimes might consider like this a choke too so you're like working with just this tiny space in between here and here as a main if you don't equip your ai properly to handle this base layout so andromeda is a good map in terms of making your ai robust to handle some slightly different layouts in terms of the way that your main base and your, your next expansions are and everything looks like ironbot doing the end scout again not finding dragon just yet uh but dragon finds ironbot on the second scout and confirms that it is again this one base two factory style dragon seems to have a really good ability to block that vulture run by that iron bot really wants to try and go for so as long as it can successfully do that block again i think it'll be okay worker count seems really low for dragon though um only 11 workers it may have been that way in past or in the past two matches and i just did not notice but being able to see both the main and the natural mineral lines uh with this like the way that the train is laid out really just highlighted to be like how few workers dragon has in the beginning here Dragon's saving up a lot of money too which is pretty weird factory just going down now and actually two vultures get in a third vulture is going to get picked off trying to get into the main one worker two three four so four workers and three marines go down uh which could be significant if dragon's gonna have this low of a worker count here but the factory is gonna come up online we'll see if another run by goes down here a third one just barely made it in but got picked off rather quickly and now mine's out mine's picking off some of the marines oh but that vulture kind of got stuck trying i think it was playing that mine mine does go off dragon having a little bit of a uh, some issues getting going here on this one also this run by like that's a pretty far distance from the mineral line so dragon perhaps just struggling to do the scv block of the run buys here and iron bot might get a win here keeping that worker count down pretty low the scvs in the main all but gone but a tank does come out now and Ooh, it takes some pretty heavy damage from that mine. It's going to eat oh, those two mines as well. Now we've got Wraiths out. The bunker appears to be empty. I 
there's one marine out and it's in the main before dragon that second marine comes out but vultures are taking some shots okay now we have siege coming in and yeah i'm not sure what happened to dragon this game it like it just seemed to take a really long time to get its first factory down and then the uh, vulture run by ended up being successful and could not be blocked uh as well as it needed to with the workers so iron bot getting a bit of a surprise win well i mean it's surprised given how the first two games went right but i think iron bot's gonna be able to close this out yeah there's three workers no minerals for dragon iron bot shows that it still <laughs> can hang with dragon and can still get a win it just needs that vulture run by to uh, be effective I think in order for the game to translate into a win for iron but we have our first non 3-0 series of the elimination phase as iron bot uh we can see how pond does this similar code as well because how pond branched off of uh, iron bot where it sort of targets down all the buildings uh equally spreading the damage out amongst all the buildings that are left this vulture is just parked and checking out that command center not firing at it which is kind of interesting to see i think it wants to lay a mine somewhere and it's struggling to do so like perhaps where the command center is is where it wants to lay that mine but uh iron pot's gonna move this series to 2-1 currently and uh we'll look to get that reverse sweep Game 4 taking place on Fighting Spirit. We have Dragon spawning as the Orange Terran up at the top left of the map. And Ironbot spawning as the Purple Terran down in the bottom right. Fighting Spirit, the one map in the SSC AIT map pool that is still being played on the Blizzard ladder. So, a pretty familiar bot, or familiar map for a lot of viewers probably. And also, uh, probably one of the most played maps on the Schnail Uh on the Schnell ladder. Um, this is the best way to word it. Because, I mean, it, there is a ladder there, but also it's not... You can you can do practice play and stuff like that. And probably a lot of pra practice games happen on this map. So it looks like we have similar builds starting off for our two players here. The barracks are coming down. We have the gas for Ironbot, so this will be uh, probably that one base, a two factory opener. Now, Fighting Spirit... I feel like you can block the run by pretty easily. We'll see how effective Dragon can be with that. Because that seems to kind of be the key to Dragon winning this matchup is just blocking those Vulture run bys and not really taking any damage from them. Looks like this will be a gasless expand from Dragon again. It's not a, like a full on 15 CC, but there we have the 17 command center. Going down 17, 18 command center. We have the one marine trying to keep the scouting SCV of Ironbot back. So Ironbot has not got to scout what is going on inside, but does see the very quick expansion coming out of Dragon. Here we have the second factory on the way, vault, first vulture going. So we'll be looking to see that first run by attempt. The scout SCV getting back into the base. <laughs> we'll get picked off now though as that first vulture pops. The uh, bunker is down for Dragon. Gets loaded up with a few Marines. And it looks like Dragon's going to be ready to try and block that run by attempt. I think if they come uh, through the south of the bunker, that's going to give the largest chance for Dragon to block this. If they go up above, uh, maybe there's a chance, but a lot of SCVs now gathering around this bunker, getting ready to block that run by. And yeah, they try to go along the south, get caught up on the SCVs. One's going to make it through, but with like no health and just very quickly gets picked off by a Marine coming in. So very nice stop of that first run by. We'll see how the second run by attempt goes uh, as Iron has tried to do about like two to three uh, run by attempts in each game. We've got the two Vultures here waiting for that third Vulture. Try and do that, that other run by again. But yeah, there's just, there's so many Marines too in that bunker that the, the Vultures just get so damaged. Now there's a tank out on the field. 
and yet I'm going to immediately back off after seeing that tank siege mode deployed, taking some heavy damage on those vultures, and the run by attempts have been shut down. Snow Ironbot's going to have to rely on its play uh, to really hold it, getting its second base now up and running and sending SCVs to saturate it. Still, okay, we have a tank producing, but we really need to just pump tanks out of this machine shop uh factory just constantly instead of switching back into vultures after that first tank pops because otherwise we're just not going to have the tanks to really hold dragon back and i think it's going to look like the first two games that we had looks like dragon is looking to get itself some breathing room here Got a little bit of a vulture chase and unfortunate for dragon that that uh, vulture is firing from the low ground but now they're both meeting on the low ground here the Wraith is out that will push. Yeah, and again, with Ironbot here, we have the one tank. Mine's getting an okay connect, picking off a couple of Marines there, but yeah, this is just not, I think, going to end well. We do have a turret coming down, which will protect this tank from the Wraith play a bit, but. Tank may be deciding on if it wants to back up or try to move forward. Taking some hits and it's gonna yeah fall there and now with no tank and no tanks in production it's just pure vulture army this marine medic tank army i think is just gonna be able to push this back yeah dragon making their way across the bridge here the third being taken by both oh, actually just by dragon no third for iron just yet just full on pumping the vultures and off of three factories now going up to a fourth and a fifth factory sending an scv to go to the third but it's like where's where's the tanks <laughs> where is the tank army that's really needed here oh the dragon getting hit with the uh unit vortex here now scv's being sort of dragged into it But it's just a tank and a marine, so I think Dragon's going to be okay, unless more of the army starts to fall into that vortex. It's been unfortunate for Dragon that uh, it was given the spawn that has that unit vortex there on the ramp. You don't see that so much on modern maps these days, because they have the tools to discover those unit vortexes before games are even played on the map, and to fix the pathing on the map so that that won't happen by making small tweaks and adjustments to the terrain layouts that... Uh, you know, pathing node is not in a spot where that sort of thing will happen. It looks like we've got a cat SCV now sucked into the vortex. It's like a little mini black hole just slowly sucking in more and more units. The, there's still just like two tanks for Ironbot here, and Ironbot is uh, being pushed back. Those tanks are being very quickly cleaned out by the superior tank numbers of dragon who is building some uh some macro buildings in the middle of the map here going ahead and taking a fourth base iron bot's doing the same as well but dragon i think is really the one that can uh defend that more than iron but it is good to see iron trying to keep up pace now <laughs> there's a wraith hanging out <laughs> off the vortex the wraith isn't really stuck there but i think it's like trying to go with the army um, that the deputy said we actually have a dropship here, uh, which I don't think we've seen in previous games. It looks like there's a medic, three marines, and a tank in there. So dropping a tank off at a safe spot that will be able to handle the uh, turret. But that is pulling Iron's forces back enough that Dragon's forces can advance. We can just see the huge supply difference here: 169, 170-ish to 130-ish. Uh, and Dragon is just taking a very commanding presence here on the map. We've got vessels out for Dragon as well now. Cloak is out for Iron Edge. I'm seeing that uh, maybe before Dragon. I'm not sure exactly which one got it first, but you can see the cloak breaks on both sides. Again, having this area units can be good because it just gives that extra vision to the tank since the tank uh, range actually is larger than what they can see.
of SCVs getting caught in between the two bases. Looks like they want to go to this third here. Uh, but yeah, or fourth rather. But yeah, Dragon is going to take out that fourth base. Ironbot getting knocked back down to three. Dragon seems to be just staying on the four bases here. We have Dragon marching down towards the bridge of Ironbot. If they can get on the other side of this bridge, or, or rather, if they can get onto the mainland, mainland side of the bridge here, I think they're still just going to be in trouble. But it looks like they are getting to move across the bridge here a bit. Looks like a good attempt at defending here by Ironbot. Just two shops on the factories. So let's just take a quick look in the main of Dragon. Dragon actually has a rather low factory count, just three, but all three have shops. And I think all it's really producing out of those shops is tanks. And so it just just has the superior tank count. We can see some defense matrixes went down on a few of the tanks. And yeah, let's push now across the bridge. Ironbot's going to have to push out of this narrow choke, and yeah, I think that natural command center just getting shelled, gonna fall. And now Dragon is gonna be pushing into this natural and probably the main. Uh, we've already got Wraiths harassing it, it looks like a building has already, or two have already fallen, probably from the siege tanks from the low ground. Dragon looking to secure its way into a game against Crazio in the round two of the upper bracket. So valiant effort there by Ironbot, but the Dragon having pretty resilient code against the uh, Vulture run buys. It, it seemed like in that game three, when the Vulture run by was able to, to work, like it was pretty effective. But when it fails, like Ironbot just doesn't really have the tank count or it doesn't get the tank count that it needs behind that uh tanks are really like the, the big muscle of the terran army we have a couple of tanks sieged on the ramp that are kind of logging things up as they still have buildings in range so they're not on sieging it's funny the marines are getting past it all by kind of just stumbling on each other and, and resolving collisions to get in front of the army there But yeah, the main now getting clean up. Looks like Ironbot did try to take a base over here on the left, but there's no production left for Ironbot. So Dragon just needs to clean this up and close out the series here. Did end up taking a fifth at the main. Dragon had taking a sixth at the natural, but uh, bottom left's the natural while Ironbot holds the main there. But Let me just take a look at the upgrades here real quick. Looks like Ironbot did manage to get up the 2-1 with uh, their vehicle upgrades. Dragon finishing up 3-1 and uh, really that plus 2 attack is kind of like a big tempo changer in TVT because a sieged tank will kill another tank in 3 shots uh, with plus 0 or plus 1 weapons and then once it hits plus 2 weapons it just takes 2 shots to kill that tank. So that's usually like the the big upgrade that you watch in a Terran versus Terran is who's going to get that first. And once that's got, you know, and even on both sides, it's still an advantage because you're still killing enemy tanks just at one shot faster. Here we have the final buildings of Ironbot falling. Dragon claiming its spot in round two of the upper bracket. Ironbot will drop down to the lower bracket, which we'll take a look at uh, once we finish up the next two series that we're going to watch. So let's go ahead and get our third series of the day started. Jumping into our third series of today, we just saw Dragon move on to round two. Will face Crazio in round two. Ironbot falling down to round one of the lower bracket. But now we have Stardust and Xiao Yi from COG 2019 going out it, going at it rather. We've got Xiao Yi spawning as the Red Terran up at the top right of Benzene. And down in the bottom left, we have Stardust spawning as the Blue Protoss. 
a Stardust, very, very powerful Protoss AI, very, very strong Dragoon Micro. Xiaoyi, nothing to sneeze at either. Uh, I think it typically makes an appearance in the elimination bracket each year. If there is a year where it didn't make it, it was probably pretty dang close to it. Looks like the scout from Stardust gets in. And we'll go ahead and dance around a bit. Gonna be chased by that SCV Marine coming down, so it looks like Xiao Yi going for that uh, quick expansion, or will be going for a quick expansion, going ahead and throwing down a bunker, uh, getting the factory down. Probably checking out what's happening, see if there is a natural being taken or not. Second gateway coming down for Stardust back home. So two gateways before a Nexus, probably going to want to Siege expand to get, get uh, Siege mode as your first upgrade, basically. Got one worker in the gas, so I'm expecting this is like a fast gas build, although we are getting a Vulture instead of Siege, so we're not really reacting to what we're seeing per se, um, at least as far as we're not seeing any like uh, DT tech or anything like that. SCV Scout does get picked off, but did see that Stardust is going up to a third uh, gateway, but did not see whether the Nexus had gone down or not. But we see that the Nexus is coming down, so it's uh, likely to be somewhat aggressive build coming out, but not super aggressive. I hope there are Marines in that bunker as this one Marine is running back for his life. Gets taken out. Are there actually... Okay, there is at least a Marine in the bunker. We've got four SCVs ready to repair that bunker. Fifth one coming down now as there are four. Um, now, typically, as a human player, you would do... Um, like one SCV per Dragoon for your repair, so that way you don't have to constantly babysit it. A little bit of struggle there from those SCVs. But uh, as an AI, it's okay if you're over repairing somewhat because you're just going to immediately repair. I know that Marine kind of gets in the way, and now there's enough Dragoons to start picking off uh, SCVs here. And this is really why I was talking about, you know, going tank first and getting siege mode. Oh, and the bunker falls because the SCVs start tripping over each other, trying to build another bunker, but immediately canceling because the dragoons are just there and yeah i think this is uh not going to be good uh shall you can try to hide up the ramp but there's just the one tank you're losing all these workers six five four three just set all of the workers down to their doom out of workers no more income resetting the unit production but yeah this is uh just not well defensed by Xiaoyi, basically. So Stardust didn't really have to do anything special here. Um, although I did like the starting of the targeting of SCVs once there were enough Dragoons. Shadow just comes in to scout and check things out. Say, hey, what's going on? Wonder if there's anything in that. There might be like a Zealot or something. But also, if I remember correctly, uh, Stardust can like do drops with the shuttle to try and bypass tank defenses so nice jump out into one zero this round by stardust we'll get into our second game second game of this series will be taking place on fighting spirit we've got xiaoyi in the blue trunks spawning his Terran down in the bottom left and down in the bottom right in the red protoss trunks we have Stardust. So I'm not sh I mean, other than this being a four player map versus a two player map, I'm not sure exactly what differences uh, on this map could potentially play into the matchup here. Um, I mean, we still have like Choke, you know, Bunker you know, here. Still, you, you could place the Bunker back a little bit to maybe make the uh, less of an arc available to the Protoss Dragoons, but there's still enough that could be problematic. If Xiaoyi tries to open that aggressive uh, vulture way and Stardust goes with the three gates before the Nexus. So we'll see what they decide to do. I mean, in some degrees, there is like a little bit of risk in what Stardust is doing, right? Because if Xiaoyi goes straight for mines, like there's going to be no detection for a while, right? But 
pretty much if those dragoons get to the front before vultures can really get any presence on the map, then you can't lay your mines, right? Uh, and, uh, and even if you do lay mines, if your Protoss opponent has three gateways, they can kind of just walk a dragoon through some of those mines and eat them and <laughs> get there with a pretty strong force still, so... I really think against this style that Stardust is doing, uh, Terran AIs are going to need to do a bit more of a cautious uh, style where they, instead of going vultures, will go for siege mode and tanks, but it looks like Xiaoyi being wanting to be very aggressive here. There's an SCV at the ramp. Check out what's happening. There's two marines there, a third marine now, all the way I start of a Stardust Space Stardust, mixing it up a little bit here, just getting two gateways and then an expansion. And Stardust Army chasing back the Terran Army, but now the Terran Army chasing back the Protoss Army. A little bit of exchange of damage there. We have an Academy going down, which I think, if that started before the SCV Scout got in, then that's probably good. But if it did not, uh, then, you know, that Academy is a bit fast, I would say. It's like the Dragoon on hold position there, just holding the ramp, is taking some damage, so... Uh, Cho Yi could have committed and killed that Dragoon. But as it stands, that Dragoon will live to apply some more damage to the Terran army, and it gets a kill. And another kill. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna go ahead and fight this army back. It was looking a little bit dire, we do have a medic now, so... It looks like what Shai is trying to do is like a vulture marine medic in the early game rush. Uh, but I don't really think I'm digging it all that much. I could see it being a bit powerful against uh, an AI with a little less micro. And yes, I still have that very, very heavily damaged dragoon selected. It is still alive and helping to apply pressure. Siege mode is not done just yet. Just yet. It just finishes. But there's already just so many Dragoons. They will be able to, I think, maybe... No, there's just too many Dragoons. If the Dragoons wanted to, they could just dive on that tank. The tank is being very brave walking forward here. But I think also Xiao Yi's just like kind of pulling all of its workers off the mineral line. And now just doesn't have any come to make units. And we can see the production tab, the huge difference here. The supply, huge difference. Supply of 8 versus 77. But yeah, Stardust can just walk up here and just end this game again. So it looks like this may end up being a relatively quick 3-0 in favor of Stardust. And yeah, Stardust is just a really powerful uh, AI on the scene. So not too surprising there. Once these buildings get cleaned up, we can load up the third game and see if Stardust will get our second 3-0 sweep of the tournament, or will Shall Yi be able to squeak out a win in a game against Stardust? Let's see. Game 3, Stardust looking to close it out, getting to take place on Destination. We have Stardust in the light blue Protoss up at the top of the map. Xiaoyi in the green Terran down at the bottom of the map. Now this map, depending on bunker placement, could work a little bit more in Xiaoyi's favor. Um, we'll see, but I believe this is one of the first maps where I saw Stardust using the shuttle to bypass this whole choke area. So we'll see if that does come into play. If I'm remembering properly on that or not, we have the gateway and then a scout. And now we have a scout coming out for Xiaoyi. I'm just going to get in here. Gas goes down, so no gas deal. Although, I don't know that any real Protoss AIs utilize gas deal. Uh, and that's also kind of falling out of favor a little bit in uh, human meta. Not extensively so. Still happens on two player maps. Gas is done. We've got a core. We've got a second gateway. We'll see if uh, Stardust decides to go for a two gateway expand or a three gateway expand. 
We have a bunker right up at the front here. I think I like that positioning. Guards these pretty well. And yeah, we have the aggressive uh, marine going across the map here. Second one and a fa factory on the way here. No zealot this time. <laughs> marine, was, <laughs> marine just walks right up with the dragoon pops out just in time to uh, push that <laughs> Marine, that was funny. Marine's just like, oh hi, throw toss base. Oh crap, I'm being, I'm being fired at with hot balls of, I guess, plasma or whatever it is that the uh, dragon shoot. And then he ended up getting taken out. But now this, uh, I was saying this being, this choke being the two bridges will be a little, I think, more tricky for Stardust to move across if Stardust tries to move across it directly. We have a fourth gateway coming down, though, after the Nexus, so Stardust definitely looking to be aggressive here. Marine just... Giving Marines for free, definitely not a good thing to do. It looks as if Xiaoyi wants to be aggressive here, but yeah, like pushing into the tiny choke, which is supposed to be your defender's advantage, not the best choice here. Robotics facility on the way for Stardust. We'll see. Uh, does Will that make a shuttle or not? Going to keep an eye on that. Stardust also getting its natural set up. Looks like it's taking a third on the right side of the map as well. Xiaoyi is just taking its natural now. Siege mode is not on the way yet. Probably waiting for the minerals to come in for it, but there are a lot of dragoons and there's only a single tank. There's no units being produced right now. And Stardust might be able to just move in and take this out. There's a shuttle on the way. The SCVs are tripping on each other a bit here with the repair. And Xiaoyi's worker count is so low as well, like only... 15. I mean, I know that some have been dying now. The, the natural command center actually finishes this game, so that's good for Xiaoyi. Uh, but it looks like the shuttle is here, and yep, it uh, Stardust is moving away from the front, and I believe that Xiaoyi can see this with the starport here, and is sending the workers after these dragoons, but there's just no economy. There's no economy, there's no army. Stardust is just going to pick this apart again for just a resoundingly strong 3-0 win here in round one. So Xiaoyi will move on to round two of the upper bracket and will play the winner of the next series that we're going to watch here. Or sorry, I may have said that. Stardust is moving on. No, I think I said Stardust is moving on. Um, and Xiaoyi is going to go down to the lower bracket yeah just very solid execution from stardust this series so looking forward to future series with stardust in it stardust wins three zero our last series of today here it is our fourth series of the round one We'll conclude half of the round one bracket. We've got Protoss versus Protoss here. Mad Mix spotting as the brown Protoss. Top right, down to the bottom right, we've got Purple Wave as the yellow Protoss. And just a quick look at that bracket as it stands right now. Crazy and Dragon are going to meet in round two. We've got McRave Z and Ironbot. Not pictured here, but they are going to meet in the lower bracket. Round one. And now we've got Purple Wave and Mad Mix P going at it. The winner of this will go on to face Stardust in round two, and the loser of this will go on to face Xiao Yi in the, in the uh, lower bracket round one. So just looking at what these AIs are doing here, it looks like we've got uh, Forge first from Mad Mix P with a couple of cannons in the main. Is an interesting choice, perhaps. So I'm curious as to why Purple Wave has sent out two probes here. Perhaps one to look for proxy plays uh, based on where it's scouting. But it does find where Mad Mix P is and is quickly bringing that other one home. 
Or actually, no, this one's just kind of dancing out here. I'm not sure what that's doing. Very confused. But there's a zealot going over to watch the path. The side path. Now, this is an interesting map on Roadrunner because there are multiple ways to go from main to main. Um, not sure what these extra probes are doing over on the left side there. Uh, but we'll try to keep an eye on them. I mean, it's probably scouting. Like, uh, I mean, Mad Mix P obviously with Forge opener and PvP one base getting through cannons, like not not exactly standard stuff, right? So, uh, Mad Mix P may have at uh, various points used proxies against Purple Wave, or Purple Wave is just like okay, Mad Mix P does non-standard stuff. So I'm just going to pretty much try to be prepared for most anything. Looks like we have a Reaver shuttle. Not quite. Yet, I don't see... There's no shuttle on the map, but Reaver is about to pop. Normally, you, if you're going to pair that Reaver with a shuttle, you would do the shuttle first. Looks like it's just going to be a slow Reaver. I'm going to go ahead and crawl across the map here. Looks like Mad Mix P going to try and move out here to take its natural. There was a probe out on the map, maybe doing some scouting. Gonna come home. Thought maybe it was gonna start the uh, the natural nexus, but looking at it, Mad Mix P doesn't quite have the minerals for it. Up to four gateways on one base though. And looks like we have our first engagement of the game here. It's Reaver, ooh, doing some serious damage. Yeah, I think that, Re that Reaver was just like a big difference maker here it crawled its way all the way there to just turn the tide for purple wave purple wave going looks like they were going to go straight into the main here but now they're taking their time to destroy this natural fighting the dragons from low ground but with the reaver support there that's able to work and i think actually even just done a numbers game purple would kind of have the advantage engaging with the cannons now up in the main on this on the high ground and yeah, I think Purple Wave is uh, just going to take this one. Went with a good tech advantage. Um, looks like Mad Mix P may also be having some trouble producing out of all four gateways at once just due to economy sizes. But Mad Mix P could have a chance here still, but... Yeah, there's two Reavers now, and they're just gonna chew up anything that comes out of these gateways. I think Purple Wave is gonna take game one here. I'm wondering what Mad Mix P is gonna throw next at Purple Wave, if it'll switch up its build, if it'll do the same build. I don't really get the opening with cannons first, like it must just be maybe it's easier to protect against two gates that way or uh, maybe for just to get detection in the main in case of a DT rush I'm not exactly sure what that would be f like what the point of the opening is right like what is it uh, attempting to accomplish for Mad Mix P my best guess is detection DT defense just make sure you don't die to like fastest possible DTs or uh, proxy DTs things like that a purple wave's gonna go up 1-0 we'll get ourselves into the second game of the series after a good performance in game one we now find ourselves on game two on La Mancha with purple wave spawning as the yellow pro toss down in the bottom right and over on the bottom left, we have Mad Mix P as the orange Protoss. I'm going to keep the camera on Mad Mix P so that we can uh, check out what its early build is going to be. Looks like an early probe going out. Unsure if that is just, looks like that's just going to be a scout. As the pylon gets sounded, we can see the difference in timing too. That sending that early scout uh, does to that first pylon going down. 
Purple Wave Scout going out. Looks like to be going in the right direction. It looks like they will both find each other on the first scout. Looks like we've got the forge again. In base, will we see... Okay. You know what? Maybe the forge in game one was meant to be as part of a cannon rush that just was not able to materialize. But good job of Purple Wave keeping a probe here to harass it. Now actually pulling probes to deal with these cannons. And I think Purple Wave is going to shut this down. Good targeting down of those cannons. And then the probe that's trying to make those cannons gets picked off. Zealot is out on the map. How will Mad Mix P transition out of this? Because Purple Wave knows where Mad Mix P's base is, knows what is there, but going after the pylon to prevent any additional cannons from being put down. We have a Dragoon on the way. And yeah, that cannon rush will be shut down pretty quickly there. But we've got actually more probes coming across here. More pylons being thrown down, but here we have Dragoon Hoth Zealot coming back. Uh, the probe still scouting Mad Mix P's main. Cannon started to come down, but still pulling the probes, which I like because the army count is still a little bit on the low side. And it looks like this will be shut down again. We've got three more probes, though, coming across. And it looks like the transition out of this is happening with the three cannons at home. So, yeah, I think what we saw in game one was an attempt at this cannon rush that was abandoned rather quickly for some reason. Perhaps uh, Purple Wave's base was not scouted in time, and so Mad Mix P just decided to transition to something different. So we have uh, even more cannons coming down this time, though technically the part of the mineral mine is exposed. And the Nexus is maybe exposed if Singularity Core is done. Probe gonna get picked off there. Yeah, there just really is not a whole lot of room for Mad Mix P to do anything here in this main. We've got a Reaver on the way. It'll probably slow crawl over here, but once it's over here, it will be able to outrange the cannons that are down. And there really is, like, there's nowhere to put a gateway with how Mad Mix P has done these cannons in the corner here. <laughs> it just did not give itself space if those cannons were up at the top of the ramp. Uh, I could see an op opportunity to get like one to two gateways down. But as it is these dragons, although that gateway is going to finish, I don't think anything useful is going to be able to come out of it in time. There's a zealot trying to uh, populate here, but I don't think it's going to work for getting destroyed very, very quickly. That gateway actually ends up getting destroyed before the zealot can even come out. And here we have the reaver slow crawling here, about to get here. And actually, I think that top left, yeah, that top left gateway is now unpowered. So the reaver just needs to work its way up the ramp. Yeah, I think Purple Wave recognizes, you know what, I can just, like, afford to, I can afford to lose goons uh, in this instance here to take this out. So Purple Wave going to go ahead and clean this up. Nicely defended by Purple Wave. If it did not have that worker pool, uh, would have been in, I think, a world of trouble here, but it had the, school, the, the skills in its tool belt to be able to handle what Mad Mix P was throwing at it. Purple Wave cleans up the final buildings here. Purple Wave going up 2-0 in the series. And we'll see if Mad Mix P can uh, get a reverse sweep going here or will Mad Mix P fall down to the lower bracket. Game three taking place on Andromeda here. We have Purple Wave, the Orange Protoss up at the top left spawn, and down in the bottom left spawn, we have Mad Mix P spawning in as the White Protoss. 
So I've talked about uh, how this map can present interesting challenges to AIs. Looks like Mad Mix P, as far as I can see on the minimap, has not sent out uh, crazy early scout, so we might see something that is different out of the AI this time. Looks like the gateway from Purple Wave has started, and we have still a forge starting up for Mad Mix P. So maybe the strategy from the first game was not an abandoned cannon rush as this game. It seems to be doing the same thing where it is getting that forge first uh, and then just at home cannons. But this time they're in a, or in a pretty good place. They are right at the ramp here. And while this won't necessarily secure the gas here uh, for a second gas, it will still give the second expansion on this particular map for some additional minerals. We'll see if it plays out any different this time. Looks like Purple Wave still scouting around for proxies as well. And we do have the mineral only base being taken here. I wonder if this was any other map, if uh, this would have been placed up here. This may be like a forge fast expand sort of thing, but the AI is considering the mineral only to be like its natural base as opposed to the actual natural base. Like I said, Andromeda is a bit weird to consider. This little pocket third that's right at the ramp here. Looks like Purple Wave just executing the same build that has won it game one and two, getting into those Reavers. First slow crawling reavers and then eventually shuttle reavers off of one base while eventually taking a second base. Mad Mix P going up to three gateways, maybe a fourth gateway here soon, but I think it's taken this expansion a lot sooner uh, than it did in game one. In game one, there was actually fighting while the Nexus was still morphing in or morphing warping in. So. Mad Mix P may be having a bit of a better start to this game with that pocket expansion that it took. Run out a couple cannons over on the right side there, which is an interesting choice, but would defend against any sort of drop play potentially coming from that extreme angle. No dragoons out just yet for Mad Mix P, but they are on the way producing. We have the first shuttle coming out for Purple Wave. I imagine that must mean that there is if a Reaver out on the field. But uh, Purple Wave taking a bit more of a defensive stance here. And mining from the long distance mining from the natural while the Nexus is warping in. A little bit interested. Pretty me to see. That's all it coming in. So yeah, I think Mad Mix P might have not known where Purple Wave was. Uh, but finds with that zealot and then sends the army up here engaging though with that reaver out on the field in smaller numbers not sure if that is the best move for mad mix p but mad mix p is expanding behind this and if that gets up we'll technically be one base up over purple wave yeah, both sides just macroing up out of their gateways Nice concave from Purple Wave, shutting down any sort of aggression. Looks like the shuttle is struggling to pick up the Reavers here, and then it just keeps immediately dropping them for some reason way far away from the battle. But meanwhile, Purple Wave has made its way into the natural here of Mad Mix P. As that Nexus finishes up, looks like there's a very forward Stargate being put down. Again, these mains are a bit wild. Uh, surprising that, like, it has a whole lot of space right here that it's not using. An observer seems to have got picked off. But yeah, I think this natural is going to fall. That Stargate's going to fall. And Purple Wave will soundly knock Mad Mix P back to two bases, one gas. And this third never really got a chance to get up off the ground. like we've got yeah another expansion gonna come up over on the right side for purple wave purple wave trying to push up this ramp here but this ramp is a bit awkward to go up but it's also going to be very hard and awkward for mad mix p to try and move down it
supply counts definitely in the favor of purple wave they have an equal number of workers currently Adam XP going up a little bit more producing a few more workers though And then Purple Wave is still producing as well and actually jumps up ahead again. Purple Wave trying to break up this ramp here. Juggling three Reavers with two shuttles. It's kind of like that. I feel like it's like the cup game where, you know, there's like a ball or something under one of the cups and you have to pick which cup has the ball. These shuttles are sort of just shuffling around the Reavers. It's like, which, which shuttle has two Reavers and which one has one? Uh, maybe going to drop one of the Reavers up on the high ground. There we go. One of the Reavers gets up to the high ground. The worker count for Mad XP plummets as this uh, mineral only starts to fall. But now the Dragoons of Purple are starting to trip on themselves, but they do sort themselves out. And yeah, the, the supply is just well in favor of Purple Wave here. 143 to 32. Most of that for Mad Mix P is workers. And I think Purple Wave is going to secure themselves a spot in round two in the upper bracket. But a good attempt from, Pur uh, from Mad Mix P, I would say. Just an interesting choice of builds to go with the forge first. I think that kind of hurts its user or its user, its unit count here. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna conclude the first half of round one here. But of course, we are going to watch this out fully because maybe there's a surprise. Maybe purple wave crashes or something very unusual. I don't suspect that is going to happen. Though we see High Templar coming out too. We can check here that, you know, Purple Wave is continuing to just expand, take more bases behind this. There's actually... <laughs> The whole army of purple wave seems to just be we see like the opposite of um iron bot and how pod where how they spread their damage across all of the buildings here we have purple waves entire army focusing on individual buildings and maybe a little bit of avoidance of overkill because when their scarabs were coming after that just about to die building like the army ship that it's focus oh i'm gonna oh there's another building that was noticed up there almost looked like that reaver like got pooped out of the the dead building but purple wave secures the series 3-0 with a pretty convincing performance though not a bad attempt from mad mix p So with that, we have concluded the first half of round one. Again, just to make it clear, we are planning on doing this both on Sundays and Saturdays going forward. Chobo should be uh, covering, Chobo Swagons should be covering the Saturdays uh, when able, and I'll be covering the Sundays when able. So hopefully we're able to keep that up through the tournament phase here. Taking a look at the results, we had Crazier and Dragon move on to face each other in round two, and then Stardust and Purple Wave moved on. McRave Z and Ironbot dropping down to the losers round one where they will play each other, and same with Xiao Yi and Mad Mix P. So this coming Saturday, uh, we should have the games of the rest of round one, which would be Monster vs. Uh, Microwave, so we'll have a, a Zerg vs. Zerg. Upon vs. Steamhammer, which I believe will be a Terran vs. Zerg. Banana Brain vs. Tier Protoss, which will be another uh, PvP. And then finally, Beta Star vs. Willy T, which will be a PvT. Really looking forward to those games. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm excited to watch, like, Monster. You know, it's ranked number two. Um, Hop Howden is always fun to watch as well. Banana Brain, Beta Star are both good. Uh, and that's not to discredit my Bruce team or Protoss or Willy T either. But obviously, <laughs> apparently all the picks that I just did that I'm excited to watch are the, uh, the ones that are higher ranked which is kind of, or higher seeded which is just kind of funny that it worked out that way but uh looking forward to those games as well and again we will see you uh, hopefully again on saturday 
for that broadcast. Uh, that will also decide who drops down into the losers round. The rep fills out the rest of losers round one, uh, and then I will be back on Sunday with the full losers round one. Um, after that broadcast, so I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We appreciate the support. Links are in the description below for the various discords and for SSC AIT's live stream. Until next time, everybody. Take care.